Okay, I'm making another one of those. I'm gonna make something along these lines. It's not gonna be the same because it's impossible to make it identical. But I thought that I would turn the camera on and show how I'm doing it. So basically I'm just using this size from my heart template and I'm trying as much as possible to place them. This is the hardest part really. I'm trying to place them so that they connect with each other as much as possible without overlapping and stuff. So like I said, the, the placement of these is the hardest part. And it's not perfect. There are little gaps, but it's okay. Some some work better than others. Like that that trio right there worked perfectly. So I'm just going to fill this page up. I don't know if you can actually see now that I, th I guess you sort of can, but I'm just using a pencil right now. So and it's been a while. <laughs> been a month or two since I made that so I don't remember I don't remember exactly how I did it but anyway we'll... we'll see what we can do So anyway, I'm just going to fill the whole page up like that, and I'll be back. Okay, I had good lighting, but the weather is turning again, so... But anyway, uh, that's where we're at so far. And from here, what I did was use these. Derwent watercolor pencils. I use these because I have more color variety. So I just used a variety of colors. I just basically I With one pencil, just go around and put some of that color in some of the hearts, not all of them. And I try to make it uh, visually pleasing in where I place the colors. And then I go with a similar but slightly different color in those same ones I just did. And it's okay if I don't get all of them. will be mostly the reddish colors so this is more of an orangey color so as you can see I'm not really 
being careful about what I'm doing. I'm just trying to get something colorful going. And I think I'll finish these off with this deep cadmium yellow. Just for the bits that are still white. And it doesn't matter if you go over the like outside the lines or whatever. Okay, I think on the page that I showed you, I kind of had made lines like this row would all be the same basic colors and then this row would be the, and you know kind of but this time I'm doing it a little bit differently I think I will make some crimson pieces now And I mean you can also you can always come back. And this is an imperial purple. Oh and by the way, the paper I'm using is just a sheet from my Canson mixed media. A sheet from this. Canson Mixed Media. Ninety-eight pound. Yeah. Okay. And I think I'll finish this off with Blue Violet Lake. For the more wider. So basically I'm putting two to three colors per heart. Oh, it's raining. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue to do this, choosing different colors. Now I'm gonna use a ultramarine blue. I'll probably mix some pink with this this one and uh, so yeah I'm just going to keep going until my page is full and I'll be back okay that's where we're at okay it's always good to have a paper to work with You'll see in a minute. Okay, um, so I'm going to try to... I'm going to start up here. And basically I'm just going to... Activate... The colors I just put down. And it's okay if it goes off the paper. Now you can you can see that like if I had just done 
one color, it wouldn't be quite as. It would it would just be one color. <laughs> it wouldn't the. It's subtle, but you see a ver a variety, and I like that. So, I'm going to try and find the ones that have the sim the same color scheme, and do those. Then once I've, once I think I have all of the ones of this color scheme, then I will do this. Oh, couldn't see that. Okay, I'll I'll do that again soon. Um, Okay, so once I think that I have all of these ones, I will do this to clean off my water brush and then I'll move on to the next color. Now for if I like from from this to this might be okay if it mixes a little bit but I don't want to mix like the orange and yellow with something that has blue in it because then I'll have green and well you all know about that <laughs> so anyway I love my water brushes I use them often That one's showing the variety nicely. Okay, and as I'm coloring, I'm kind of, I mean, as I'm activating, I'm kind of paying attention to how I'm making my strokes, sort of, like, I'm not doing the way I did when I, when I applied the color. I'm kind of going around with the heart shape. So those two are very similar, but they are different, and it's okay. And so anyway, I'm just going to keep doing this until I've done that to all of the hearts. So I, I'm not done, but I was just thinking that if you want to do this and you don't have watercolor pencils you could do it with just a, a cheap you could do it with uh, watercolors just you know a, a set of watercolors they, they you can get those inexpensive you can get the kids set and you still get a variety of color and yeah, so you can you can still do it and if you don't have a water brush you can use a regular brush or even a q-tip <laughs> That would probably use a lot of q-tips though because it would probably use it up pretty fast But yeah, you can just use regular watercolor paint and Activate it with a regular brush and, and water. OK, 
Okay, so those two ended up next to each other, and I think they're pretty much the same, but it doesn't matter. Just means they're a match, they're a couple. And the more water you use, the easier it is to blend and move the color. So the faster it goes. But if you use a slightly drier brush, then you get different results. And I'm sure you could do this on, if you don't have specialty paper. I'm sure you could do it on a piece of cardstock or even on a just a, a regular page. It might it might change things a little bit just because watercolor will watercolor paper is made for watercolor, so you know it just kind of reacts differently uh, on anyway you know what I'm saying you're smart anyway I'm just gonna finish this up I'm almost done but I'm gonna finish this up and I'll be back okay as you can see I've got them all activated and blended and everything and by the way, the curling happens. It's normal. Uh, the The page in my journal is has been flattened because it's it's one of the last pages in my journal, and so when I close it, it kind of flattens it by the weight of the rest of it. But anyway, okay. So next up, I have these watercolor crayons and I'm going to use the white one and I'm going to choose one side um, to me just because that's the way I usually do it because it's excuse me because it's habit I'm going to do it so that it's this side so the right side um, and I'm going to do And you probably won't be able to see this very much. I can barely see it. But basically what I'm doing is a little bit at the top and on the sides. Okay, and a little bit right there too. So... Okay, so you, you, oh, sorry. There, you might be able to see it on the red one. No, not really. Anyway, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that to each of them and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm pretty sure you won't really be able to see it very much, but here on this one, you can kind of see it. So there's a spot that I did a little thing there and like a hook right there. And I did that to each of them. And now I'm going to activate that white with my brush. And every time I'm going to remove what color was lifted onto the paper because otherwise I'll have the wrong color on the wrong heart. So it may not really seem worth it, but it is. And I'm also removing a little bit of the color while I'm at it. So It 
in person you can see the difference better. Especially on the darker colors. This process goes fairly fast. Anyway, we're going to keep doing that and I'll be back. Okay, next I will use two of my favorite uh, stamps. And I mean, you, for this, you can use whatever you want. You could use swirlies or even dragonflies or whatever, anything you want, if you want to do this step. This is my jet black stays on. And I'm just purposely making it so that it doesn't necessarily cover everything perfectly. And it doesn't necessarily have to go in the same direction. with that one. Okay. And I think I'm not going to do every heart, just here and there. Huh, neat. This, this stamp fits perfectly over the heart if I <laughs> if I do it right. say that's good. Okay, this is a Derwent Ink Tense Bark 2000 watercolor pencil. And I first got this, I got this and a white one and a red one in the ink tents just to give them a try to see what the big deal was, why everybody liked them so much. And when I got them, I tried them and I really didn't like them that much and stuff. But I have recently started using this one in particular a lot. And I really like it for for this uh, for for what I'm using it for but and I will probably buy this one again when this one runs out but 
I don't think that I have use for any of the other colors of this. So anyway, so this, and if you don't have this and you want to do this, you can use a dark brown or a black or even a, a dark blue watercolor paint or you can use a black crayon or even a black colored pencil not watercolor but watercolor does work better for this just it just looks nicer so okay um let's do one that you can see let's do this one so similar to what I just did before the stamping with the white um, I'm going to do this and a little bit right there okay and then once I activate, I'll activate it now so you can see. Once I activate it and blend it in, okay, I might need a little bit more right there. Okay, what is up with that? Just working on that one. Okay, so anyway, you just do that, okay? So I'm going to do that to each of these, the whole sheet, and I'll be back. Or maybe I'll let you see me do, oops, a couple more. Maybe, maybe this isn't quite dry enough yet. Maybe that's why. Okay, you don't, you want to try to avoid having a harsh line, but you, you just blend it like that. And again, before moving on to a different color, it's a good idea to clean off your brush. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to do that to all of them and I'll be back. Okay, so this is what we have so far. And for this next part, you want to make sure it's dry. And this is just a black Sharpie. If you don't have Sharpie markers, any type of marker should be able, should, should work. But if you don't have any markers at all, I don't know what to tell you about that. I suppose you could just use a, a colored pencil or something. But this black outline really makes a... It just makes them pop and I just really like it. Also... It helps to connect some of the hearts that didn't quite connect. And as you can see, I don't necessarily do a perfect job, <laughs> but see, it makes a big difference. You can
Okay, so I'm gonna outline all of them and I'll be back. Okay, that's where we're at. So next up, we're gonna make it, we're gonna do some more white with this first. This is a Prismacolor, but any colored pencil will do. And I'm just doing the same thing I did with the watercolor pencil, but doing it with this non-watercolor pencil. This you can see a little bit better than you could with the watercolor, but not really a whole lot better. try to avoid getting the white on the black marker outline but if you do it's not a big deal okay so I'm gonna do that to one of them and I'll be back okay if you don't have this this is my Sakura jelly roll which I absolutely love. It's my white Sakura Jelly Roll. Now, if you don't have this, I suppose you could use uh, a white acrylic paint, a, a fine liner brush, or a toothpick or something to apply it with. You just want to make a few squiggly marks here and there on top of the white colored pencil you just put on. And this usually cooperates much better than it's doing for me. There we go. And every now and then you want to Clean it off. Maybe this one's running out of ink or something. fine. I guess it just doesn't like the colored pencil. It doesn't usually, but it usually will do it anyway.
So anyway, I'm going to do what I can. To add the white highlights and I'll be back, but first I want to show you something because I think I forgot to say. If you are not lucky like me and you don't have a template, a heart stencil or template, you can easily make your own. All you have to do is get a piece of paper, fold it in half, draw a half heart. Okay, and you can make it whatever size you want. Cut it out. And you can make the, the type of heart you like best. You can make a long elongated one. You can make a short fat one. You can make a so anyway, so you have this, and then once you have this, you can trace around it on uh, like a piece of cereal box or something like that, because that will make it easier to trace around. And then, like you would trace around it and then cut a square around it, and then cut the inside, cut the... You would do this. You pretend this is a piece of car, uh, cereal box. So you would trace it and then you would cut around like that and then you would cut this out either with your scissors or a, an X-Acto knife. And then you, then you have your, your thing to trace around and all your hearts will be the same. So there you go. Okay, so I'm gonna do the jelly roll highlight thing and I'll be back. Okay, so the it's kind of subtle but it does make a difference to add it on. You can see it on this one pretty good. Okay, so what we do next is grab your cutting mat and if you don't have a cutting mat just use a piece of uh, cereal box or, or something, a scrap paper or whatever to, to make a little stack um, and put it on top of that. You will have to keep replacing it if you do that because it'll only last so long before it's cut and, and causing troubles, but I've done that before, before I had this, so it it is doable. And then you just cut away around the hearts. Now, I mean, if you don't want to do this part, it's it's optional, of course, but I like the look of it. You could just, instead of doing what I'm doing here with my X-Acto knife, you could just um, color in black or just leave it like that or Gesso or something. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much how it's done. Okay, um, I accidentally cut more than I wanted on a bad angle there, so I'm just going to 
fix it with the Sharpie. And when I'm fussy cutting like this, I find it easier to just maneuver the page. So that I have a better angle to work with. And once I'm done cutting, I can go over with the marker again to cover up the imperfections from where I cut. So like that little white spot right there, I can cover that up with the black. Or I can just cut it away better. So this is why it's important to have solid connections because when you come to do the inside here, if you didn't have those connections then you would just basically you would have a bunch of loose hearts. This way they stay together as one piece. And I'm going to save these pieces because I have an idea. Um, <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> uh, but, so yeah, there you go. This, so I'm just going to cut these, these out. So I have it cut, but you can see white bits where I didn't do go close enough to the black. So like I said that I was going to do before coming back on camera, I'm going to use the Sharpie again to fix those areas. So inside the tiny little bits there, it's kind of hard, but... nowhere near perfect but there you go there's the finished product so doing this you end up with some pretty cool pieces of scrap paper I see lots of different critters and things in here but 
mainly I see she's kind of like an or it he or she is kind of like an art quirk face right there eyes and stuff and there's a oh there's one looking at me she's upside down to you but she's she's got very long straight hair and and pink lips and she looks like a high fashion model or something like that and anyway I saw I saw three of them when before I turned the camera on but then I turned it so you could see them and now I forgot where where they are anyway you get the point there's another one similar to this one right there and there's a there's a cool gentleman old man with long hair and beard right there his eyes, his nose, his beard. Anyway, it's fun.